Welcome back to our third and final segment covering the songs track by track from the record Blood and Stone from Seven Dust. John Connolly and Lejean Witherspoon are my guests discussing the tunes. Before we go into the songs themselves, what are you doing, Lejean? You're messing me up. Oh, sorry. I was, I was back playing. <laughs> I was forced. <laughs> Like, I'm like 12 inches from the IMAX, so you're like this big like, in my no, face. I'm like, what? Started, you're like, started uh, laughing. I was like, <laughs> well, let's talk Sorry. a little bit uh, about Elvis Basquette, who uh, you guys have worked very well with through the years. And you've certainly worked with a ton of phenomenal producers. But what is it about this guy that uh, vibes so well with Seven Dust? He lives right there. <laughs> John's neighbor. John's next door neighbor. He seriously lives like 10 minutes up, up, up the road. So he's, uh, he moved into town a few years ago, um, and we, we just kind of clicked, you know, and it was one of those things where it, it was sort of obvious. He, he'd been working with Alter Bridge for years. As a yeah. matter of fact, he's, he actually worked with uh, Miles Kennedy even before Alter Bridge, all the way back to Mayfield 4. Mayfield 4, yeah. And I don't think Miles has really worked with hardly any other producers um, since the Mayfield Four days. Um, so it was kind of one of those things where I remember, you know, once we met Miles and we were talking with Miles, he, he was always telling us, you know, what a great time that he had working with Elvis. Just because Elvis is, um, he's, um, he's an amazing engineer, but he's a great singer, he's a great songwriter, and he's a really, really good guitar player. And he doesn't mix like a guitar player. He mixes more like a drummer bass player. So it's like almost like the best of everything. You know, you're going to get the guy who sonically is going to knock it out of the park, but he'll also sit down and he'll be honest and tell you this song isn't strong enough. And he'll do it with all the love in the world. He'll just be like, look, if you want to, if you want this to go this way, I'm just giving you my honest opinion. It's, Mm. it's average. (laughs) And sometimes it's tough to hear that from a producer, but sometimes it's what you need. I I want to backtrack a a little bit on your answer. You said he mixes like a bass player or drummer, Mm -hmm. not a guitar player. Explain what that means. Well, you know, in our, we've had so many different engineers and producers over the years that you can usually, you can listen for me. I can always listen to a mix and kind of tell what instrument, um, you know, that mixing engineer typically plays. Um, Guitar players always mix guitar heavy, you know, bass players typically mix bass heavy. Um, (laughs) <laughs> but I, I, I always started out playing drums. So low end and the pocket and the drum sound for me, even as a guitar player, is critically important. It has to be the, you know, especially in Seven Dust, you know, with Morgan being such an amazing drummer, that has to be the centerpiece for me. And then everything has to kind of build around that. And we didn't get that until, um, you know, the home record, we had a little bit of it, but but that was sort of when we were still in that, Everyone was trying to do the lo-fi thing where they were trying to kind of dumb the sound down a little bit and kind of, you know, everything kind of had the blanket over. So we sort of tapped into it, but I think on animosity, that's when we really said, okay, this is, this is the type of production that we feel most comfortable with as a band, you know, and and those three records, the first one was whatever second one kind of grew. And then the third one, we went, okay, wait a minute. Now we're on to something. And I mean, for me, it's just, it's, it's always cool when you can get someone who is so strong with all of, you know, the entire mix, but is also a great songwriter, you know? I mean, there, there's no way I can speak highly enough about how much he actually does contribute to the songwriting process. And sometimes it's just because of his opinion, you know, not even an idea that he'll throw out, but he's always throwing ideas out. You know, if you give him a guitar and a microphone and let him sit down in front of a Pro Tools rig, he can write an album, you know, in a week. You know, it's what he does. You know, it's, 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 it's his, his main love is being a singer, songwriter, guitar player. So for us, it works great because he's almost like that sixth member who can come in right. objectively. I love working with Elvis and, uh, and Jeff, man. It's a, uh, for me as a singer, it's incredible. Like John said, his, uh, he's, he's just all around. He lives and breathes music as far as I'm concerned. Once he's in that mode, you know, as a beautiful family too, but uh, it's amazing to, uh, to be, captured in that energy uh, with the band and with Elvis, because uh, I feel like we've kind of become one. It's a, it's an incredible uh, thing that we do together. It's a uh, very focused and, and fun. And it's always a good energy. There's never really, uh, I don't think there's a day that he comes in in a bad mood and, you know, you always look forward to working with Elvis and that team just because uh, you never know what's going to come out. And I, I think uh, it's a learning 
process for us, for us all every day, you know, and it's just really cool to, to, to have that type of a leverage and energy and to, you know, have someone come in and kind of, I feel like it's kind of, kind of can police the band, but he doesn't do that. But I feel like it's good to have somebody, you know, come in and have a different opinion because uh, we've been doing it for so long. It's, it's great to find someone that we really mesh with good. And he's, you know, he's a part of the family. They are. Well, then let's dive into the uh, the last set of songs on the uh, the album, Blood and Stone. Uh, the next up for us is Criminal. What can Ooh, you tell me? That is, I, that's one, man, I feel like Criminal, for, to me, I feel like should be a single. I, uh, the catch it I, is, yeah. Yeah, from the I, first moment I heard that one, when Clint brought it in, I was like, yeah, that's, that's it's just a no-brainer. Yeah. yeah, so I really love it. I think it's a, a, a great melody. I think the chorus is huge. I think it's one of those songs that people remember, you know, uh, I always like to say, you know, I like summertime songs, I like springtime, I like winter. I feel like it's one of those songs that you can, you know, put your hair back and hang out and, you know, just have a good time. I feel like a lot of these songs in this album are like that, you know. May, may it be because uh, we finally started going to Florida to record uh, <laughs> and not in the middle of some winter storm where we <laughs> yeah. barely make it to the studio at times, but uh, it's been a pleasure being in Florida. And I think that reflects on the energy of the music to the surroundings and where you're at, if that makes sense. For me, it seems like it's changed over the course of the years. Does that make sense to you, John? Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. It's like, you know, the difference in going to somewhere, you know, not to knock anywhere else that we recorded before, but when you're hanging out in Chicago, you know, a week before Thanksgiving and it's like negative 13 degrees, <laughs> it's a different vibe when you step out of the, out of the studio yeah. Then when you step out of Elvis's place and it's 90 degrees and, you know, it's sunshiny and, you know, Clint's going off to ride the bike or Vinny's going for a run or we're going to hang out in the pool or going over to Yellow Dog Eats. It's just, Yellow Dog Eats. I mean, it, it's, it just, it kind of soothes the environment of what you're doing. You know, when we were at Architect, we had, um, we had a great experience at Architect and then we did another one in February where it was the end of the world. I mean, it was like, LJ, I've got pictures and video of LJ literally sh shoveling snow every day just to get to the studio. <laughs> it was an hour process of work to get to the studio. By the time you show up at the studio, everyone's just like, you know. So needless to say, Florida has been angry music, but <laughs> well, Florida has been a great uh, outlet for us. Not saying that I'll be there anytime soon, but <laughs> once everything is better, I can't wait to do it again, man. <laughs> That's true. Bring your mask. <laughs> <laughs> um, astronaut suit at this point. Oh, astronaut anywhere, suit, yeah. anywhere at this point. Astronaut <laughs> <my> suit. I <laughs> think. <Exactly. laughs> By the way, you made a quick aside in there. Was it Yellow Dog? What was that? Yellow oh, Dog Eats. Yellow Dog Eats. That's LJ's, what is that? That's LJ's joint, man. That's my I'm, I'm, uh, I'm from New Jersey. I don't know from Yellow Dog. Now, you've got to explain all this. <laughs> Yellow Dog Eats is this fantastic uh, house that's a restaurant that uh, specializes in barbecue and all these crazy eccentric hippie sandwiches. Craft beers. Made, yeah, craft beers and a little bitty joint. People play, you know, outside. There's got a killer like, patio. Yeah, a VW bug out there you can sit in and eat. I mean, it's walking distance from uh, the house, the studio. So it's always uh, good to get out. You know, I would always go down there and, you know, have a beer or get some food. And that kind of turned out to be our spot. I'm looking them up right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to continue yeah. to look them up oh, yeah. while you tell me about the next song, Against the World. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> against the world. What was against the world? That was Drive Doggy. Yeah, it? I was getting ready to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still stuck on the working titles, man. Against the world. <laughs> that's another. That's another good one. That's uh, I love the chorus on that one. I can't sing it right now because I was uh, wrong. <laughs> that's another banger, I think. Against the world. Jo <laughs> I was on. Yeah, 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 it is. <laughs> no, that's a good banger too. And John, what were you going to add? I just remember uh, "Drive Doggy" was the was the working title on that one, and I just remember just being fixated on the the title itself, just because I thought it was it was it was such a cool title. But yeah, I mean, it, it turned out to be such a such a cool song. Yeah, um, very very Seven Dust. You know, yes, I think it's so. got all the elements. It's um, you know, it, it's 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 got the you know electronic uh, element of it, but it, it's super got a super super huge chorus about it. And, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's very, very seven dust, you know, all the it's way around. Be, I think it's going to be fun once we are able to go out and play in some type of capacity to perform these songs together, because uh, I really feel like we got oh, a good is. match of uh, 
songs that, you know, that, that, that people can sing and remember. And again, is that really when these songs come to life? I mean, uh, and that's not a dig uh, in any way at the recorded versions of them, but do they really come to a greater life when you get them out in front of people? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. yeah I, 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 once you see the feedback, that's an incredible thing because you feel like, uh, you know, not, not a pat on the back. Nobody wants that, but you're doing something right. But then once you see it in front of people and the response, and then you see someone singing the words back to you, then you know you've done something right. You see them dancing, because that's what I like to see them do. I like to see them dance, you know, then I know something's going on. And that's an incredible feeling, because if I'm dancing and then you dance, and I know we're liking it, because uh, that's what I'm doing when I'm listening to Seven Dust. I'm, I'm doing like this. You know, I'm in the band. I'm still a fan of the band, you know, so definitely. Uh, before we go on to the next song, I, I do have the Yellow Dog Eats yeah, I love that place. Man. I got I got like tons of their hot sauce here in my house. I can never really make my food like theirs, but I pour a lot of their hot sauce on the stuff that I do make. <laughs> See, the hot sauce I really love is Gringo Bandito, which hey! is oh, Gringo Bandito from That's the Offspring. From, that uh, stuff, yeah, is yeah. <laughs> and it's not ultra hot. It, it just actually tastes really good and i put that on everything i put that on eggs i put it on mexican i put it on uh that's how that's how i am with hot sauce man i love hot sauce but it's got to have good flavor to it like just being hot for the sake of being hot it's like ah, you know you can make it <laughs> fortune as long as it's got a good flavor to it i'm all good with it yeah, I've been yeah. wanting to try that Offspring Guy stuff, man, for years now. I need to check that out now that I've heard you say it's good, Luke. Oh, it is outstanding. And, uh, yeah, John, I'm with you. I mean, I want to taste the hot sauce. If it burns a hole through my tongue, I'm like, yeah, maybe not so much, guys. Right, right, right. It's like once right, you get in, like, I scorpion peppers and stuff like that, <laughs> it's like, okay, you know, it's like, where's the flavor? <laughs> yeah, if there's, a skull and, if there's a skull and crossbones on the bottle, I'm I'm probably right. passing it on. So, uh, yeah. or if you got to sign a waiver to to eat it, oh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? Am I going to die? No, I don't want to. <laughs> Someone's going to have a hot sauce that kills COVID nineteen at some point. Though. There you <laughs> go. There you that, go. That, that, that's the new challenge. Okay. <laughs> From your lips to God's ear, <laughs> we'll be drinking to my esophagus. <laughs> let's let's, <laughs> let's do it. All right, let's go on to the next track from Blood and Stone. It's called Alone. What was the working title, LJ? Remember? Oh, no. Linear. <laughs> no, my God, I was getting ready to say this. <laughs> Why was it named that? I don't know. I have no idea. Because we call it Linear. We yeah, like, linear. yeah, Linear. linear. Uh, that was one of the first songs that we, in the first batch of songs we were writing. It was an oldie, yeah. It was just a good, yeah, it was a good time, man. And I those think songs we did that good. one. Didn't we do that one on one of those, um, the write, the group writing sessions? Yeah, yeah, we did that thing along there. Came yeah, people saw us write a song together as a uh, as me, John, and Morgan, and uh, it came together, and it was something that actually stuck on the album. It was really great. Just uh, that, you know, I think at the time we were we were just really peeking on each other. It was really good, and uh, like I said, we just come off the road and we're able to write together and do this and we're all relaxed too we've been home for a minute so it was just good timing i feel like this album is just really cool that's a great song too for a couple of those songs like that one it's i mean for me that was the first time we'd ever written in front of a group of people yeah absolutely. Like, you know we usually go off by ourselves you know and the only people we have around is you know jeff and elvis and mm -hmm. you know that's uh, porterhouse or you know someone in the studio like we, we don't have like people sitting behind you like wait a minute there's a That's whole so crew back, back here, you know, taking notes. <laughs> I forgot we did that. We need to mention yeah. that. Too, to yeah. We need to mention that when we talk about that song again like this. So now you've yeah. heard it. Yeah. People were watching us write that song. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And you kind of zone out and you, and you kind of dive in and we'd be doing our we thing. Kinda, and then we kind of look around at each other. and We got around. There's like 30 people looking at it like, oh, God. <laughs> They're all sitting there like, oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, we forgot you guys are back there. We were in the zone. <laughs> and again, I, you know, I would think, uh, writing songs in front of other people, strangers or people you don't know well, would have to be, in some ways, like really embarrassing. Like it was very, know, very weird, vulnerable. It's different. Yeah. Open book. It's your diary. Different. 
Kind of like your diary, like you open it up and people look over top of you looking at like, oh my God, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, is he really going to say that? Exactly. Gonna, is he, when's he going to tune the guitar? Exactly. <laughs> what, what, what's that old joke, you know, dance like no one's looking? Well, guess what? We were dancing and we were crashing and burning. We were like, oh, man, this is going to suck for a minute. Hang on, hang on, break yeah. yourselves. We'll fix it. But at the end of the day, it was a great experience. Uh, uh, it, it was it was a learning. I think it, uh, it it put us all in a position that we had never been in before, and I think that's something good to get outside. You know, get out of your comfort zone, and that's exactly what we were we we, we were forced to do, uh, not knowing how the outcome was going to be. Because not every time you go in to write a song, you come out with a song. So you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying. So we were kind of under pressure of uh, doing that, and it had it happened. So it was really good for this song to be able to make the album under all that pressure, if that makes sense. And then the uh, the next track, number 12, is Wish You Well. And this tune, you know, I think it almost could have been a perfect closer for the record. You left the Soundgarden cover uh, for that, and we'll come back to that. But first, let's talk about Wish You Well. What do it's, you think, uh, Don? What do you mean? What do you think about the song, Wish You Well? Well, I mean, it, it sort of was the closer because, you know, the, the Soundgarden was, a song was something that we were kind of looking at as more like not really a bonus track, but something yeah. that was going to supplement, you know, what, what we had done. So, you know, in the sequencing of the record, that's why it sits in the 12th slot, you know, kind of right in front of where the cover was. Because um, I sing it that way because I know the day I tried to live was the very last song that I sang on the album. So, yes. I actually yeah. Did, yeah. So I thought, yeah, I, I did. You sang it that way because it was Woyo. Woyo was the name there of it. There you go. I think you sang it right before that. Yeah, I was Lejean, ex- ex- explain what you're talking about there, and and why you did things that way with the you know how the song needed to be sung, and why you sing them in particular orders when you're recording. <laughs> oh, well, not particular. I just I like when I get in a, a, a singing mode. I like to sing, and I was able to you know well, we had time. We had a time issue too, so I was really banging them out. And it felt great. Uh, the day I tried to live definitely for me was going to be the last song on the album I was going to sing because I was a nervous wreck about singing it from the day that someone said, why don't we do that song? And I was like, it's a great song. Who's going to sing it? Uh, you. I'm like, great. Yeah. What? <laughs> so anyway, uh, it, it's, it's true. Uh, but anyway, you, uh, the wish you, well, I think that song is great. And it's a great way to end the album, like John said. But what was really cool was to be able to feel your body resonating from singing this whole Seven Dust album, this collage, this beautiful piece of work that I feel we put our hearts and soul in like we always do. And then to have the opportunity at the very end of it, the last year of recording, to have this chance to do a Soundgarden song. And how do you go into the studio and do this? How do you pay homage? How do you try to fit yourself in the shoes of Chris Cornell? So I had to say, I can't think that way. I have to go in and do it the way LeJean Jermaine Witherspoon and the band Seven Dust will do it. Put my heart into it and my soul and trust my brothers and the guidance and Elvis and the team. And, you know, even I remember singing the first verse and, and looking at the window and looking at Elvis and saying, sound cool. And he was like, we got this. John, <laughs> we got this. John was there still with me. He stayed with me to the studio until the end. And, man, it was a, a, what, a what an incredible experience to do the whole album and to finish it with The Day I Tried to Live. It just made it a – it was great. I don't think I talked to my wife for two or three days when I, once I got home right after that, just I was still so just consumed with everything. I just, that was the first time I got to stop and not have to sing and just to, you know, just to reflect on everything. And I thought it was a great experience. If, if you can, can you give us some sort of insight into Chris Cornell's voice and what made him so unique? C- certainly like his, his tone and his notes and everything are, are part of it, but there's, I don't know. I, I don't know how to describe it. I'm hoping you can, but there's some I, other I, things going on in there that, that made I him think, an extremely unique cat. I think he had a, a, a soul sounding voice in a genre of music that necessarily wasn't very used to that soulfulness over top of rock the way he was doing it back then. I mean, you think about uh, Temple of the Dogs and all that stuff that they were doing. I mean, we were back then when we were kids and we heard it, we were like, what are they doing? This is amazing. It was just his voice, the delivery, uh, the passion. I feel like any artist out there, if you haven't ever heard of Soundgarden, you definitely will. Uh, there will be a, a band that will go on forever. Chris Cornell's vocals, his writing, he's a legend. He'll, he'll always, you know, he'll be that guy that uh, will always be a teacher, I think. 
Well, that was uh, very well put. And uh, I appreciate all the time from both you gentlemen to cover the uh, the really excellent album. Uh, by way of wrapping up, if you would be so kind, um, what would you like to say directly to fans? For example, the guy who lives across the street from me, Kevin, uh, is – I don't know if he's the biggest Seven Dust fan on the planet, <laughs> but he's in the top five. That's and awesome. uh, he goes to all of your meet and greets and all of your stuff. And uh, he's just emblematic of all of these people who have been following you guys for well over 20 years. Uh, you mean the world to them. What would you like to say to them directly right now in the middle of all this craziness? John, I'm going to let you go first. I mean, thank you for all the support, you know, for, I mean, what's going past two decades now. Um, you know, I mean, it's a dream come true. Every, every day I wake up and I go, wow. I mean, never in a million years would I, I thought that we would be where we are right now. You always hope, you know, you always want to swing for the fences and hope that, that you can do that. But, you know, the fans are what made this possible. You know, I mean, the folks that have stuck by us, you know, stuck with us for all of this time, uh, have been patient with us trying to figure out how to release this record, um, in particular, because th th this was a tough one. I mean, we've been sitting on this one. Um, this one was finished, you know, about 10 months ago. And we had every intention of getting this out, you know, spring, summer. But with the no touring thing happen, it was it was a new wrinkle that we kind of had to figure out, you know, what's the right way to do it? How do we approach this? How, you know, we need to be sensitive to a lot of different things, you know. Uh, we know people are hurting out there. You know, we know a lot of people are, you know, out of jobs, um, you know, homeschooling, and the entire entertainment business is kind of sitting on the sideline waiting, uh, you know, to figure out when we're going to be able to do it. So, you know, thank all of you guys for being so patient with us trying to figure out a completely new model on how to roll a record out. You know, it was like, I'll oh, just throw it out. I'm like, no, we sort of need to kind of put everything into the equation and, and kind of figure out the best way to do this. So, you know, thank you for, uh, for going along for the ride for sure. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And and Lejean, if you would like to add to that, please. I, uh, John, he nailed it down. I'd just like to say thank you to everyone, our family out there for the support. Uh, and when I say family, I mean everyone that's grown up with Seven Dust from day one and even the new family out there. Uh, I know it seemed like the world changed overnight and we were all trying to navigate through this crazy life. And uh, we're no different than anyone else in the world. But luckily, we have people like Lou Brutus and uh, you have this plateau on this avenue for us to still get our music across because I feel like, honestly, this is what this world needs is music and it would be even crazier if we didn't have it. Um, if anything else I could say is everyone stay safe. Please do the right thing so we could possibly get back to having a concert and seeing each other. Because if you don't wear the mask, we ain't gonna ever gonna be able to do that. Because they dance <laughs> in and no venue and have nobody playing jumping around trying to dance to nothing. So sorry. Once we get back to that, we'll be good. And I can't wait to that day. But I, I can't wait for everyone to hear this album because we still love doing music and we're gonna do whatever we can do to make sure we get it to you. And, uh, and we can still enjoy it and, and love each other. We'll, we'll see each other soon again. I, I feel it. I got a feeling. Well, with a live thing in mind, I, I want to add on one quick addendum. When um, the time comes that we can all get back together again and go to live festival shows and Seven Dust hits that stage, you watching us right now, I want you to do something when Seven Dust is playing. I want you to not look at the band. I want you to look at the side of the stage, the wings of the stage, because I guarantee you that every other musician from every other band is going to be standing there with their jaws down on the floor, looking at seven dust and wondering how they got so fucking good and why their band can't be as good as seven dust. I've seen it time and time again, and I can't wait to see it again with my own eyes. So on that note, John Connolly, LeJean Witherspoon, I love you guys to death and I love Seven Dust. Thank you so much for the time and good luck with the new album, Blood and Stone. Thank you much too kindly. We love you, man. And uh, much respect and thank you for all the years of the support. We are definitely family, man. And uh, God bless you and stay safe. And I can't wait to see you again. And Darla. <laughs> Darla the Wonder Dog. Uh, and on that, we'll let you go. I'm Lou Brutus. Thank you so much for hanging out. Remember, in dust, we trust. Uh,